think that the idea of a crowded space is great um, in a lot of ways because it gives us choice. And I'm a big believer in, in having that choice. Um, I think diversification, if as long as your goal is not self-serving, if the goal is serving the consumer and what you believe and in, in asking the consumer what it is they want more of, uh, you know, where they can benefit, uh, what value you're offering, as long as that is your driver and it's not about, um, oh, I need a podcast because I want to promote myself or um, I'd like to be on camera or I'd like to have more followers, you know, in, in other veins of social media. I think if it is if the strategy is focused on the end consumer and the deliver of value, you can't go wrong. Welcome to Empower Her Money Podcast. I am your host, Angela Duncan, speaker, best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, and we talk all things money and business. Today's episode is sponsored by freemoneytipsbook.com, freemoneytipsbook.com. Head over there, download your free ebook, Seven Unshakable Tips to Get You Started on Your Financial Journey. Today's episode, I get to interview Amy Somerville. She is the CEO of Success Inc., which also includes Success Magazine, one of my all-time favorite magazines. She's going to talk about how to reimagine and reinvent your brand and also the future using AI technology. Welcome, Amy Somerville, to Empower Her Money Podcast. How are you today? I am great. Thank you so much. It's just an honor to be here with you today. Yeah. So I would love for you to kind of start off with your story and your journey and how you got to be, you know, the, the headmaster at success um, today. <laughs> the headmaster. Oh, I kind of like that. I kind of like the visual of what that title looks like. Um, I am currently, and I will just start out by saying it has been a, a wild journey. I was uh, really just sitting and reflecting on the year of, you know, gosh, how did I get here and where did it start and, um, and kind of uh, where the connections were and how important connections are to where you get uh, in your life. And um, so currently I'm the, the um, headmaster, uh, no, I'm the, the CEO of Success uh, Enterprises, which is the magazine, Success Magazine. It's also uh, uh, podcast, speakers bureau, content, Success Plus, um, all the things, coaching, all the things that kind of fall under that <clears throat> purview. But it, I, I, I actually, this last week marked my uh, nine months uh, as the CEO of Success. So I did not start the year of 2023 in this position. Um, Going back to the beginning, I have been in the real estate um, world and or touching personal development and professional development for a number, I just can't even bring myself to say out loud, uh, but I will, is 20 years. 20 years I've either wow. touched real estate, I know, or I don't feel that old, uh, real estate or personal and professional development. And in a lot of times in my career's um, path, it was like both. Um, so I, I started out as a, a real estate agent and team leader um, with a you know, particular brand. I was uh, an executive at Remax World Headquarters for many, many years, um, but overseeing professional development, personal development, uh, coaching, production, technology training. So all kind of in that same vein, if you will. And then um, I decided to go out on my own uh, at the end of 2020 and do my own coaching and consulting business. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point, uh, when I kind of announced that's what I was doing, uh, people that I had had unbelievably uh, wonderful relationships with in the personal and professional development world, but also in real estate, uh, called to, to say, you know, you know, like we would love to have you join our team. And for those of you who have had the um, opportunity to bounce between being a, a corporate employee and being an entrepreneur, um, I I kind of sit in the like I want I want the best of both worlds. Yeah. Uh, I have bounced back and forth uh, in in my lifetime, and there are definitely pros and uh, and and strengths and challenges uh, to both. But um, Buffini and Company was one of those relationships that called and asked and offered me a position. And I, I kind of just 
had a, a rule that my answer was going to be no to everybody it was no, I really want to go back to being an entrepreneur. I'm going to do the coaching and consulting. This is where I want to be. I feel like I can impact more people this way. And uh, Buffini and Company was super smart and said, all right, if that's how you're going to play, then we want to be your uh, largest consulting client. Oh, very <laughs> like, nice. Super smart, super smart. So I started uh, with them as a consultant, helping them uh, a couple of years ago in building their team coaching um, side of things. And uh, along the way, I like to say, you know, they unbelievably good people, just unbelievable people to work with, um, shared uh, value system, uh, shared vision and mission. Uh, so it was really easy to work with them and alongside them. And somewhere along the line, the, the Irish accent got me, I think. And they uh, said, well, no, but we'd really like you to come on full time as an employee. And um, and I couldn't see why I wouldn't. So I, I was uh, happily at the beginning of this year working with Buffini and company kind of leading training um, uh, for them and professional development and attended uh, the Inman conference, which is one of the larger conferences in uh, in real estate kind of brand agnostically and um, and parts of industry agnostically. And uh, I've, I've done a lot with Inman over the years and facilitating and moderating panels and was uh, in New York at the beginning of 2023 in January. And on the last day, I was exhausted. Um, I had had enough. I was really excited to go home and um, had put on, uh, you know, travel sweats and a ponytail to fly back to Denver. It's like a five hour flight. And I uh, got a call from a friend, I think actually a mutual friend of ours, who said, um, hey, last night when I asked you how things were going, you said good. Mm. And she said, I got to tell you, good doesn't look good on you. Hmm. And she said, I, I had a conversation with a friend last night and he would like to meet with you before you fly out today. Wow. And I said, you know, I just, I'm not there. Like I'm exhausted. I'm ready to go home. And she said, Amy, the friend is Glenn Sanford. So you're going to want to put on a dress you wore this week and take a perfume bath and like woman up <laughs> and go <laughs> with this conversation before you head out. So I did. And, I, you know, Glenn Sanford and I had met before. He is um, the uh, founder um, and CEO of uh, EXP Realty, but also acquired Success Brand uh, at the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. And Success Brand, um, for me, it has been a... <laughs> It has been uh, a pinnacle for me. It has been a backdrop for me my entire career. Mm -hmm. Going back to uh, the Remax days, I think I was kind of known as a success magazine gal. Like people would, executives would come into my office and check out success magazine from my credenza and say, can I take this on a flight and I'll return it back to you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes, as long as you return it back. So I have always been a big fan of Success Magazine. It's content, um, it's leadership, it's uh, messaging. And I think it's um, helped me become the leader I am today. So mm -hmm. it's always been a big deal. So to sit down and have a conversation with Glenn Sanford about um, Success Magazine and where it's going and, you know, kind of the opportunities for it. We just, we, we didn't even talk about um, a role. It was books we were reading and podcasts we were listening to. And we really connected. And I really saw him for the leader that he is. And he said, um, <laughs> he said, Amy, and this is one of those things that I, I feel like I, ne I never want to stop sharing because it was such a pivotal moment for me uh, in somebody else's belief in me. He said, um, Amy, do you know Jim Collins? And I said, yeah, of course. Author of, you know, good to great. Mm -hmm. And he yeah. He said, um, I believe in the, the Jim Collins way that you figure out um, your who or you find your who and you figure out your what and your why later. Hmm. And he kind of looked at me and he said, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know why right now, um, but I think you might be my who. And I just, it was such a, I don't know, it, it, such an impactful moment to feel so intentionally wanted or right. connected. Um, that I, I was blown away. I left the call, went straight to the airport or call the conversation, went straight to the airport and, uh, found myself cheating a little bit on my heart and my head. And was, <laughs> I, I flew home five hours and put together a business plan for a company I didn't work for. Wow. And, uh, and so that was like, I, I you know, again, that was in end of January, uh, mm -hmm. by February, I had been offered the position, um, here at success and, uh, you know, unbelievable people. You know, I spoke with the the Puffini brothers and they kind of said, Amy, this is, this is choosing you. This isn't a decision. 
right? This yeah. is an opportunity that's choosing you and you have to say yes. And, yeah. um, and I felt kind of the same way. It was like, gosh, is it, when I look back at the journey, all the things and all the positions in my career, did it all come to this space? And I think the answer is yes. Yeah. So a couple of key takeaways, and I always take notes during interviews because it's stuff I that I just re- remember too. So one, um, power and proximity. So originally when you said no to Buffini, they're like, well, then I'm going to be a client with you because they knew that you were amazing. They wanted you in their world. So they wanted to keep you close. So that was a huge win there. And then uh, using the keyword of success, you know, success likes speed. So being that you're like, I'm going to meet with you, I'm going to say yes, and we're going to figure out how to work together. So, and I, and I'm a huge believer, same with Jim Collins. It's like, when you meet people, you know, you want to work with them, you figure out the way or the how later, and right. you just want to get to meet them and get to know them. And then you guys connected so well. So now here you are almost a year later. So that's pretty incredible. It is. It's been um, kind of just a mind blowing journey. It's hard to even put into words. So uh, apologies if it wasn't it wasn't yeah. perfectly streamlined. But I will say, you know, here I, I sit in this space of all the things that I'm super passionate about and the different roles I've played, and even my, you know, my background in education all kind of comes to this space. And I get to now have an impact greater than I ever imagined possible, which is kind of, you know, kind of a bigger part of my. I, I feel like my purpose and being here, yeah. um, you know, on, on this earth is, you know, providing value and providing um, uh, connection um, so that people can kind of see their opportunities for success. And here I am the CEO of, of that opportunity. Yeah. And I, I was the big, you know, magazine person, success magazine was my favorite. And my daughter still remembers me listening to um, Darren Hardy on tape or on CD, right? We'd be in the car and he just had a way of saying entrepreneur that would just make her laugh because he'd be like <laughs> entrepreneur and she knew it was him. And she she always gets mad that, you know, I'm making her listen to that and not Miley Cyrus at the time. Um, but a lot of the information I think stuck in her brain. So I used to listen to him a lot on CD and I loved the magazines and it was by far my favorite. So obviously we're in a much different industry than when we used to subscribe to those magazines then. Um, a lot of this is digital now, you know, like how does success as a company still kind of thrive in this different market? So uh, interesting that you ask. So I would say, um, and it's easier for me to say, cause I'm coming in new this year. I feel like we've practically reinvented ourselves in, here in 2023. Um, and part of that is to meet, uh, you know, consumer expectations, but the other was uh, recognizing the huge opportunity that was untapped within success. So, um, you know, I, I again, I, I held this brand, the success brand on this just pedestal, gosh, as long as I can remember, probably 20 years I have been a subscriber. Um, so not realizing that kind of behind the scenes, pulling the entire ecosystem was going to be necessary for 2023, meaning mm-hmm. we have all these different um, verticals and all these different opportunities where we impact uh, consumers of our content. And it wasn't kind of working together, if that makes sense. Right. So this focus for 2023 was really pulling the entire ecosystem of success together from the magazine to speakers bureau, to podcasts, to courses and books, to coaching and events. Um, we w- became really, really specific about themes. You know, the, the goal was that no matter who is consuming content or where, that they're really clear on the messaging that success is putting out. So um, I'll give you an example. I have actually right here is um, uh, our January issue that just hit uh, newsstands is um, the innovation issue. So we Mm -hmm. became really clear about our themes. In fact, we have our themes uh, planned out all of 2024 and into 2025 so that it's not just, you know, a, a cover talent on, you know, on the magazine that doesn't connect to the content we're creating or the events we're creating or who's on our podcast or who's in our speakers bureau or our courses. Innovation issue for January of 2024. Steve Aoki is uh, our cover, um, who is, you know, obviously a world renowned DJ, but doing a lot with AI and innovation going forward. Every mm-hmm. single article through here and everybody that we have featured um, has been instrumental in the AI or innovation space. So it's very clear uh, from my CEO letter, the editor's letter, all the way through all of the content and features uh, is focused on AI. In um in March, and I'll just kind of tease you with this a little bit. In March, uh, February, March uh, uh, issue, or I guess it's um, 
typically it'll hit newsstands in, in February, but it's March, April issue is the women of influence issue. Uh, mm. So tying into international uh, women's uh, month slash day, um, we have a uh, cover talent that'll blow your mind. I'm just going to tease it. I can't tell you what it is right now, but she's unbelievable in what she's doing to support um, uh, women, but also mental health and some other just incredible initiatives. She's, she's, um, uh, it, it'll, it'll take you back in time and then, uh, propel you forward at the same time. So super excited about her, her interview We're t we tied it to a women of influence, um, uh, award program. And mm. so people have been uh, nominating their women of influence from around the world. Uh, we actually just closed that out. I want to say about a week ago and, uh, are announcing the finalists and they will be in the magazine. Um, I actually nominated my grandmother, um, Aww. you know, knowing that she probably wouldn't be in the finalists, but, you know, just to, to recognize the women that have come before us and have paved the way for us or, uh, innovated for us is, is phenomenal. So featuring them in the magazine and then also tying it to a virtual event. Uh, we're referring to it as I lead. We have the most amazing women coming to the, to the table to speak during that, uh, event. And we're going to be promoting that as it, as it comes out and rolls out here in 2024, but really, again, pulling all of it together. So there's no question of the message that success is trying to put out, but we're taking um, uh, taking into account all the opportunities to pull all access together from, um, you know, Women of Influence is a great example. We'll be doing the same thing with all of our themes going forward. So um, I think those, the, those the, like the, been the focus for 2023 and then 2024. And then we've got really exciting things rolling out in 2024. Uh, Again, reinvention might be uh, too strong a word, but we are. We are relaunching um, our Speakers Bureau. Um, we have a new podcast that'll be launching in February called uh, Success Unscripted that yeah, I will be hosting and super excited about that. Uh, we're relaunching our success coaching. So, and, and then again, uh, focus on virtual and physical events this year. So I'd say this year, moving into 2024. So yeah. just... Um, we are, we are reinventing the opportunity to make as big an impact as we possibly can theme based with the people who touch those themes the most. Yeah. And on many different platforms. And obviously you mentioned podcasts. So if you need anybody, I could be available too. All um, right. I love it. Absolutely. I actually, I mean, spoiler alert, I already talked to our editor in chief about it earlier this morning. So I hope that that is the case. I hope that's Yay. true. Hey. Yeah, so let, let's talk about the podcast a little bit. So you're keeping your theme throughout your different platforms in which you're giving information. Um, and you touched a little bit about the future. You know, what do you see as far as podcasting? Because there's 5 million podcasts on all streaming platforms. It's a very crowded space. So how do you kind of differentiate yourself and still be able to be, you know, delivering the same theme and message that you want to have behind the brand of success? Yeah, I, well, I think that's an interesting question about um, uh, diversifying yourself. And I think as long as your vision is what is driving you uh, to begin with, like, what is it that you're trying to do? How are you trying to impact? Um, I, I think it's great that they're, you know, that it's a, a noisy space because uh, I'm a big believer in the uh, in the concept of the buffet. <laughs> in other words, um, I don't like to be forced to connect to, um, you know, one person's content or one person's way over another. And sometimes different days speak to me and different podcasters speak to me in different times of my life. Um, I was listening to, um, uh, Julia Dreyfus's, uh, podcast this morning. Um, and she had interviewed Jane Fonda, like that's not typically something I would be listening to. I'm, I listen a, a lot more to personal and professional development, um, uh, productivity, you know, types of podcasts. So I think that the idea of a crowded space is great um, in a lot of ways because it gives us choice. And I'm a big believer in in having that choice. Um, I think diversification, if as long as your goal is not self-serving, if the goal is serving the consumer and what you believe and in, in asking the consumer what it is they want more of, uh, you know, where they can benefit, uh, what value you're offering, as long as that is your driver and it's not about, um, oh, I need a podcast because I want to promote myself or um, I'd like to be on camera or I'd like to have more followers, you know, in, in other veins of social media. I think if it is if the strategy is focused on the end consumer and the deliver of value, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Okay. So this is a podcast about money and business. You've had the opportunity to meet a lot of entrepreneurs 
both in under the success brand and all the previous brands too. What are some kind of like key, like key takeaways that you can give the audience so that it's something that they can put into action today to help, you know, 2024 be the best year for their business? So I think, you know, I think that there are, I think there's a lot of fatigue right now for mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Um, and I don't know that that's different than any other end of year. <laughs> um, but, you know, depending on the the space that you're in and the industry you're in, um, uh, you may be facing a lot of um, entrepreneur fatigue right now and questioning a lot of things. Um, and I, I think I would just remind entrepreneurs that um, uh, this is a journey. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, that you do need to protect your energy, especially as it comes at the end of the year and the beginning of the year. Such an interesting thing. Like you, you run your hardest at the end of the year and at the beginning of the year, depending on your industry. And those two bet up against each other. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the exhaustion is real and, and giving yourself that grace and understanding that, okay, like there, I'm going to have to give myself um, a minute. I'm going to have to be resilient to get through the end of the year and then also kick off with excitement, with newness, with um, drive in the beginning of the year. So I, I think uh, give yourself grace, uh, give yourself space, be good to yourself and be resilient uh, or know that resilience is just kind of a major piece of being an entrepreneur and that, um, and, and, you know, celebrate the, the little wins, but it's really about that long-term vision, I would say. Yeah. And I think I'm hearing the same from business owners there. This is the first year I have heard from several business owners that they're having trouble creating their goals for 2024. You know, we went through COVID and then we had time to reflect and then we got back to business and a lot of people hit the ground running like quick and hard. Right. And oh. now we're a couple of years past that. And that's what I'm hearing from business owners. Like they're just, they're tired and they yeah. just don't know how to refocus in 2024 to be able to continue to grow. But I, I think that word fatigue is very fitting. So that's, that's interesting that you're seeing that too. So good to know. Um, um, so for the future, you know, obviously AI is here. So the, the, the issue is very timing. Um, what do you see in the future for like a company like success or any type of distribution of information platform? Where do you see that going in the future and how will it be different than today? Oh, I think it's really exciting. Um, uh, my <laughs> my CEO letter in uh, the January issue, the innovation issue, will tell you exactly what my journey with AI has been. Um, so kicking off probably my my first knowledge and, and learning about AI was in March of, of 2023. And um, I uh, was not cognizant of how I was uh, accepting of AI may be uh, different than other people, <laughs> and especially I'll say with you know a, a multimedia company. Uh, so where I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool, and look at how you know like we can kind of partner with this AI, and th you know, these are the things that uh, take some of the the challenges off our our, our shoulders, and um, you know there's going to be this you know optimal efficiency opportunity, and there were people that I put in panic accidentally. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I talked to my sister about it, who's an attorney and also a writer. And she was like, what? <laughs> you know? And I'm like, it's going to be amazing. She's like, maybe I'll be put out of a job. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I talked to a friend who is an engineer, same thing. And he was like, oh yes, but you know, uh, you know, chat GBT four can't, you know, can't tell me the equation for blah, blah. And I'm like, well, let's test it. Look, it, it's got the answer where I was excited. I was putting panic in the minds of others. So I learned very, uh, I learned the hard way probably that like, especially when it comes to new innovation, how you respond to it, how you introduce it to the people that you love and care about and, and your teams, um, you need to be a little bit more sensitive to. So I had to do this full pullback of, look, I, I apologize. I was excited about innovation. I was excited about um, uh, kind of the newness and the opportunities that lay out. And I wasn't realizing how you all might feel about this internally. Um, and then it was like, okay, well, let's just take some time to discover, like go play around with AI, see where you might have some inefficiencies where AI can, can jump in and help. I don't think, uh, you know, it's kind of like anything else. I, I think technology, if used properly, comes along to support, uh, to make you more efficient with your time, to, you um, provide concepts that maybe you were taking hours to think about, like it, it might just stimulate ideas. Um, so I think it doesn't scare me that it's going to put uh, certain businesses out of, uh, you know, businesses out of business, but I think it is here to stay. I think um, 
you know, innovation is happening at such a rapid pace that you do need to jump in, like, you know, closing mm -hmm. your eyes and plugging your ears and uh, trying to ignore it is not going to help you progress uh, in your career and, and in your, you know, your future journey and success. So tap into it, play around with it, uh, see where you can utilize it, where it might be able to come along to support you. And I would say, don't be afraid of it. There, there's always going to be uh, a need for, uh, you know, the, the human thought process and strategy and emotional, you know, empathy, all of those things that AI doesn't bring to the table, at least not yet. Yeah. Just another tool in our toolbox. And I, I'm definitely one of those people that don't like change. So AI for me still is very scary and yeah. I'm trying to figure out, you know, as a podcast host, how can I use it in my business to better serve my audience? So kind of just changing that mindset and that perspective that AI is, is a tool and I'm going right. to use it for the betterment of the audience that I'm already serving. So um, great things about AI coming forward. I'm sure it, it's just amazing. All the things that I've started to see come roll out already. I mean, they're going to build like billion dollar companies in a few months using AI. And it just, right. it's so fast coming that you really do have to jump on board or you can decide you're going to be a nomad and go like live off the land. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. And I think that there are ways to protect, you know, um, uh, you know, personal, um, you know, you, you know, like your, your personal uh, items of value and, and, um, IP and still, um, kind of learn to ebb and flow with it. And, and may, it might just be, it's like, to me, I, I use AI as like a, uh, sit down and ideation session instead of, you know, taking, uh, three member of my team's time to like, well, what would you think about this? Or how do you feel about this question? Or where do you think about this social strategy? Like, I don't know. Hey, chat GPT, what do you think about this? And there might just be ways of expanding, you know, the way that I was, um, you know, envisioning things. Yeah. Helps awesome. So, talk. Yep. So I have a fun question for you as we start okay. to wrap up the show. Um, if you could have a superpower, what would it be and why? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I, you know, in a lot of ways, I'm of the belief that uh, I'm so happy with where my journey has brought me so far that I wouldn't want to go back and change anything. So if I had a superpower that changed, you know, the the challenges, the <laughs> the mountains that I had to climb, um, any of those kinds of things, while that sounds enticing, then, then where would I be today kind of thing? So I think if uh, this is going to be maybe a boring answer, but um, teleporting. I spend uh, way too much time. This is one of my biggest frustrations and pet peeves. I travel a lot for you know particular events and that kind of thing. And just you know leaving, driving, uh, you know leaving three hours before a flight, going through TSA lines, you know standing in line to board a plane, standing in line to deboard a plane, mm -hmm. getting to where you're supposed to. Be. I mean, like the whole day is gone. So if I could just say like, hey, I'm in New York. Go, hey, I'm in Miami with you doing a you know doing a podcast live. Uh, without having to think about the travel aspects, I think teleporting would be awesome. Yes, indeed. I'm indeed. back in my life. Yeah. Yeah. So if our audience, Amy, wants to learn more about success and all of the different companies and um, ways that they can learn more information, how do they best reach you? Oh, so easy. Uh, if you want to know what's going on and what's new, go to success.com. We're actually uh, rolling out a new website here in 2024 as well, but uh, success.com is a great place to go. And if you ever need to reach me, I am easy peasy, amy.somerville at success.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today, Amy. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's so good to see you. Yes. Thank you so much for tuning into Empower Her Money podcast. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, share this podcast, and leave a review wherever you are tuning in.